Ah, uh, greetings, Phil Whovians. Whovian Queen here. Hope you have a good week so far. Well, we're looking to live up and talk to you. And now it continues on with the God Complex. The Eleven Doctor, Amy and Rory, arrive on an alien structure in space disguised as a 1980s Earth hotel. An alien minotaur-like creature is in the hotel that consumes everyone who has been trapped here and is itself a prisoner who is in pain and wishes to end its life. It entices its trapped victims to enter one of the many rooms of the hotel which contains solutions of their greatest fears, upon which they become brainwashed to praise him and allow themselves to be taken. The hotel is inescapable, and its halls and rooms change on a whim. The Dr. Amy Rory soon finds the TARDIS has, dis has also disappeared, and the Dr. warns them from opening any door they are drawn to for fear of being possessed. Joe, Howie, and Rita, humans that have been taken out of their routine lives by this prison's automated systems to feed the creature, are possessed by the creature and killed. I'll explain more of the hotel. Both Amy and the Doctor are separately lured to look in two into two specific rooms, facing their own fears. The doctor surmises the hotel's rooms were, by design, meant to make the victims fall back on their faith by scaring them to allow the creature to possess them. The doctor realizes that his trust in Amy's trust in him is the, the realizes that it's Amy's trust in him that is being challenged, and it is that faith that brought them to the hotel in the first place. Amy soon becomes possessed like the others. As the creature comes for Amy, the doctor the, doc, the doctor either just grab her and take her to the room she opened previously. Inside, they find the illusion of young Amy, Amelia, waiting for the doctor to return. The doctor asserts to Amy that he is not a hero to break her blind trust in him. Once this is done, the creature outside the door collapses on the floor. As they watch, the hotel is revealed to be part of a large simulation. The doctor finds his TARDIS nearby. Gibbs, a survivor of the creature, asks for a lift home, and, then, and the doctor then takes Amy and Rory to London leaving his best for the two to stop traveling with him before they end up getting killed. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So anyway, let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. Several references to past Doctor Who's speeches are displayed throughout the walls, wall photos of the past victims of the Beast, including a Sitaran, a Jadun, a Cadkind sis, Sister Plentitude, and a Tridivore from Planet of the Dead. The Doctor identifies the beast as being from a species that's distantly related to the Naimon, a previously a foe in the serial The Horns of Naimon, and the group witnesses two illusions of weeping angels from the episodes Blink, The Time of Angels, and Flesh and Stone. Though the audience has not showed the contents of the room, numbered 11, the Doctor is lured to, the sound of the Tarsus cloister bell can be heard. Young Amelia is shown waiting for a raggedy Doctor to return from the episode The Eleventh Hour. The Doctor, being forced to break Amy's faith in him, echoes the previous event in The Curse of Fenric, where the Seven Doctor is forced to break Ace's faith in him. In the time of the Doctor, it was revealed that what the Doctor's son, Room Eleven, was the crack in reality that dominated his first series. The episode introduces the Tivolians, a race of cowardly aliens who survive by docilely allowing themselves to be conquered by other species on a regular basis. Woodhouse's Series 9 episodes, Under the Lake and Before the Flood, featured another Tivoli named, named Prentress, portrayed by Paul Kai. Or K, or however it's pronounced. Anyway, so let's take a look at the production of this episode, beginning with the writing. Showrunner Stephen Moffat originally pushed the idea of a hotel with shifting rooms to writer Toby Woodhouse from the previous series. However, as production continued, Moffat thought that there were too many instances in which the characters were running through corridors in that series. So it has for the Vampires of Venice instead, and the God Complex was pushed to the next series. They did have a Minotaur be the monster came from Woodhouse's love for Greek mythology. Woodhouse was more pleased with the God Complex and School Reunion and the Vampires of Venice, his previous Doctor Who scripts, as the tone was darker, which he was more comfortable writing. The first line of dialogue Woodhouse wrote was the Doctor's translation of the Minotaur's words, an ancient creature drenched in the blood of the innocent, Drifting in space through an endless shifting maze. For such a creature, death would be a gift. The mentor then tells the doctor he was not talking about himself, but rather than but rather the doctor. This is foreshadowing the upcoming event of the doctor's death, the story arc of the series. Amy Rory's departure in the episode was only temporary. They return for the series finale, The Wedding of River Song, and, and appear briefly at the end of the twenty eleven Christmas special. They leave they, perm they permanently leave in the fifth episode of the seventh series. 
and now on to filming and costumes. The read-through for the God Complex took place in February 2011. It was then mainly it was then filmed mainly in hotel sets constructed in the studio. The Dr. Amy Rory's first encounter with the fear in the hotel is the ventriloquist dummies found in Joe's room. Whitehouse wanted to include something big and bold and noted that there was something macabre about ventriloquist dummies. Many members of the crew were brought in to operate the dummies, most of them having to lie underneath them on the floor. The actor who portrayed the Minotaur, Spencer Wilding, is six foot seven inches tall. Wilding received a costume fitting in early 2011, after which Sue was dressed up with paint and fur. David Williams was asked to guest star in the episode in an email, in an email he agreed, having been a fan of the show. He had previously appeared in the Fifth Doctor audio drama Phantasmagoria, where he played two separate characters. Matt Smith called his co-star hilarious and found it hard to take him seriously, as he was as he was as when he was in his prosthetics for the part he resembled a giant mole. The prosthetics took, took about two hours to apply. Oh, sorry, David Williams. Anyway, Williams felt the makeup was not limiting to his acting, finding it quite expressive. And now finally, let's take a look at some outside references. The hotel and setting has been compared to Stanley Kubrick's film The Shining, using using similar compositions such as long qu corridor shots and odd angles. Critics also observed that the episode drew inspiration from George Orwell's novel 1984, particularly in the concept of rooms, or in Orwell's case, Room 101, containing each person's deepest fear. Joe also quotes the old English nursery rhyme Origins and Lemons, saying, here comes the light. Here comes the candle to light you to bed. Here comes a chopper to chop off your head. Ugh. So overall, I think this is a very unique episode of this show, and it is kind of interesting that the Doctor breaks Amy's faith in him, just as the Seventh Doctor did with Ace. So yeah. So overall, I give the God Complex four Sonic screwdrivers out of five. Anyway, to next time as we take a look at closing time. Well, hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it around, and don't forget to sub subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about when I upload videos. And if you want to help support this channel further, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. Link as always is in the description below. Anyway, until next time, this is Hoogan Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I have a recipe that with the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic! allons -y. Geronimo! Bow ties are cool, fezzes are cool, and Stetsons are cool.